couple of weeks ago, I was at a market near my place and a kid from the streets approached me. I thought he wanted to ask for money, so I was prepared to reject the fellow. But instead, he asks me if he can ride my bicycle. This is the sort of request I cannot deny, especially after seeing the excitement in his eyes. It was so relatable. Unfortunately, the bike was too big for the kid to ride properly, but the other kids did take turns to ride it. I promised the boy that I'd be back someday soon with a smaller bicycle for him to ride properly. He, of course, wanted it there and then. A few days later, I got the smaller bicycle for him and the boy, Karthik, was just on top of the world. He legit disappeared for 30 minutes and when he came back, he just did not want to give up the bike. I totally understood that feeling. So I put these same visuals up on my Instagram story, followed by a request to help me buy him a bicycle of his own. The reactions I got were uh, overwhelming as f Friends, acquaintances, and supporters instantly responded and offered contributions from all over the world. By the time I sent one person my bank details, there were already four more people asking to contribute. It was an exhilarating one hour before I realized I had enough money to buy the kid a bicycle factory. The first moral of this story is, do not ask for donations without having an idealistic or accurate number of how much you need and for what. I thought I'd just take in money and then buy a nice bicycle depending on how much money was received. So naive, Mr. Patel. After an intense hour, I stopped taking donations. But by then, I had already raised 25,839 rupees in one hour. I didn't expect to get so many responses from the nooks and corners of my follower list. Gotta be honest with you, part of why it took me so long to realize that we had enough money was that I was simply just enjoying the attention. It was really heartwarming how many random people wanted to send money for Karthik's bicycle. A day after this, I was traveling for the weekend. And when I got back, I had to find Karthik. I went to the same market area and asked people around and they said they knew him but weren't sure where he was that afternoon. At that point, it occurred to me that even if I buy the kid a bicycle, would his parents approve? Does he have parents? Where would he keep the bicycle? How would he look after it? It was important to find out. So a young boy named Suraj, who was familiar with Karthik, took us on a conquest to find Karthik's mom. We walked around and eventually found her. When I told her I wanted to buy a bicycle for her son, she was like, nah fam. She said it was a bad idea because the boys don't listen to her, they ride the bicycles very rough, and also that Karthik's elder brother would get jealous and they would fight. So altogether, no. I was keen on making it work for Karthik and for the sake of the goodwill of my followers, the gram, of course. So I told her that I would buy him a helmet and give her a lock so that she could let them cycle whenever she pleased. Took some convincing, but eventually she agreed. We found Karthik and took him to the bicycle store. It all became quite an affair. All the kids got excited and Karthik was just over the moon. The boy finally got his bicycle. It cost 4,800 rupees, meaning I had a lot more money to spend, but more on that later. They did a prayer and welcomed the new pair of wheels with a bit of a ritual. Cute, right? Yeah, then the afternoon got really hectic. Karthik's mom was right. The bicycle invited quite a bit of envy and jealousy from the other boys, including Karthik's brother. It soon became evident that the absence of adult supervision made this affair a lot more complex and annoying than it should have been. Karthik's brother was on an emotional rampage, which turned physical at some point, he attacked Karthik and the boys fought like MMA style on the side of the road. I know, I know. I owe you guys the footage, but uh, I didn't take it because I was breaking up the fight. Sorry, next time. Second moral of the story, do not buy a bicycle for underprivileged kids if they do not have adult supervision or someone to guide and look after them and the bike. As I spent that afternoon trying to calm things down, I realized that this wouldn't work. The boys' mom wasn't around and it didn't seem like she had much control over them. So I spoke to Suraj, the kid that helped us earlier, and made an arrangement with him. I bought another bicycle, which was about 6,000 rupees, a slightly bigger one, and left Suraj and his elder brother with both the cycles. 
The two of them run a vegetable stall in that same market area where all these boys usually hang out. So I told them to essentially take charge and responsibility of giving all the kids a fair turn to ride the bicycles throughout the day. I gave them locks and gave them full authority. This worked out better as none of the boys could be bossy about the bikes. They could share it and it didn't belong to anyone per se. The bikes were for everybody and that sits better with my name. Eventually, they started sharing the bikes and being nice with one another. So by this point, we still have 15,039 rupees remaining. I didn't want to buy any more stuff for Karthik. I thought I'd pay for his school fees, but they go to a free government school. Nor was I interested in buying clothes for him. So I decided I'd buy more bicycles, but for people with adult supervision. Good boy, Anish, good boy, well done. The first on that list was this old lady. I've known for a while that she looks after her grandson, who was abandoned by both parents. The kid was sweet and actually one of the only kids who didn't complain or ask for a bike when Karthik got his. The old lady told me she had space to keep the bicycle for the boy. So with her approval and blessings, I got him a bicycle too. As I got him his bicycle, as became the norm, other kids would show up, some with their parents or guardians to ask me to buy them a bicycle. These two girls also asked, and to save me from those continuous requests, one of the adults around said, cycle sif ladke ko milta hai, ladke ko nahi milta. And that was just the perfect thing to say to get me to buy them a bicycle. So I spoke to their mom and the next day I bought the girls an even better bicycle than any of the other before. I added my own contribution to buy one more bicycle for another 6,000 rupees. I bought this one for Mina, the lady who tied me a raki this year because I didn't get to go home. Mina has a young boy and girl at home and the last bicycle was our, our gift to them. And just like that, with one Instagram story, we generated enough money in an hour to buy five bicycles for many children to enjoy. What a turnaround 2020 became for them, don't you think? Quite a journey, I gotta be honest with you. You can have the right intentions, but if you don't conduct that with thoughtful and appropriate action, it can backfire real quick. I kind of stumbled my way through finding out what that action is. But that's the point of sharing it with you, raw, that we all learn and grow together. If you dig this energy, love this vibe and want to help me spread this light, please do share this video. Help the channel reach more people so that Anish can continue being for everybody in more ways than he and you can imagine. Take care, Maila, Aujo. Where do you want to go? You want to go to your house. Just show your house. Why? Yes, I want to show your house.